In this video, I'm going to go talk about the difference between spontaneous and non-spontaneous chemical reactions. And so what I mean by chemical reaction is pretty simple. We just have, you know, say substance A, we mix it with substance B, goes through a chemical reaction, and we get substance C. So we have our product, and we have our reactant. And so this process can be either spontaneous or non-spontaneous. And so what a spontaneous reaction means is that it's naturally occurring. And so what does this mean? It means that, uh, let's, say, let's say you have a car, right? And probably a lot of people do. But then after a time, you know, you leave it outside and rust starts to build up. Horrible, evil rust. And then it just, it occurs naturally. You don't do anything to cause it. You know, it's just a natural thing that occurs in our atmosphere. And so that is an example of spontaneous reactions. If we have an ice cube, that is green. If we have a blue-ish ice cube, and we put it in a warm room, something above zero degrees Celsius, then that is going to go through a process automatically. We don't have to do anything to it, and it becomes liquid water. Now again, so basically spontaneous by definition means that it occurs naturally, and that there is no external force. And so for a non-spontaneous reaction, it requires an external force. And so as an example of this, you know those horrible kids' toys? You know, the jack-in-the-box. Those terrifying, nightmare-inducing boxes of terror. And so with that, you know, you crank it, and, uh, and it compresses a spring, and then eventually the spring releases and has this horrible, terrifying clown face that smiles at you. And so this releasing of the spring would be spontaneous, but to compress it back into its original terrifying cubic shape, but compressing the spring, the compression, is non-spontaneous. And this is because it requires an external force. Well, I don't need to rewrite it twice. But you get the point. So if we want to take something and we want to compress the spring, that's non-spontaneous, requires an external force. And so the next question is, What matters? What matters to make a reaction spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Well, we generally have two types, well, almost always have two types of reactions. They can be exothermic, or they can be endothermic. And so with exothermic, you have heat released. And with endothermic, you are absorbing heat. And so, you know, basic fundamental, you know, concepts of thermodynamics, uh, temperature or heat, heat flows from hotter to colder. So you can see that if we have a exothermic reaction, we're releasing heat. You know, the universe kind of likes that. And so, you know, it's heat flows from hotter to colder, and everything also wants to achieve a lower energy, stable state. And that's important, because if you're releasing heat, you're getting rid of some energy. You know, just like if we have a, a, a hill and we're rolling a ball down a hill, then we're getting rid of the potential energy, because it has potential at the top. 
and then we're converting it into kinetic. And this is like sort of like uh, releasing heat. And so, as you can see, if it releases heat, it's likely to be spontaneous. And if it absorbs heat, it's likely to be non-spontaneous. But there are exceptions. For instance, remember the ice cube. The ice cube is endothermic. It absorbs heat, and then it goes to a liquid state. So it is spontaneous, above zero degrees Celsius, but it's not exothermic. So, so we know that there's exceptions. And this depends on one more fundamental concept of entropy. And entropy, of course, is going from, um, well, the, the universe trends, trends towards uh, going to higher entropy. Going from a, a less ordered state to a more, um, or sorry, from, a, from an ordered state to a less ordered state, much like you know my bedroom. It goes from being clean to being very messy because there are many ways for it to be messy and very few ways of being able to be clean. So if entropy, if entropy increases, that's likely to be spontaneous. And if it decreases, It's likely to be non spontaneous. And that's because it's very unlikely for something to be able to uh, become more ordered. So we can decide that if something is spontaneous, it's likely to be exothermic and it's likely to have a positive entropy. And the converse is true. If it's endothermic and it has a negative entropy, it's non-spontaneous. Now, sometimes you can have a mix. For instance, with the ice cube, ice to water is endo plus its positive entropy. And so we sort of need some sort of system of figuring out whether or not that reaction will be more endothermic or whether the positive entropy will kind of override that to make the reaction continue and go forward. And so in the next video, I want to talk about Gibbs energy which will allow us to predict whether or not a reaction will be spontaneous when it's a mix of both endothermic and positive entropy or negative entropy and it's exothermic.